Okay, day four at the state soccer tournament. Today we're taking in the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union side of things. We just watched the 1A semifinal round. I'm Ben Brackett, alongside my good buddy Blake Sievers and the Titan tactician Matt Sahag. Hey boys, how are you? Good. Good uh, Hot. first round of games today. Hot though. It is, it is sweltering. Uh, weatherman, give us just the, the rundown quick. It's a little bit uh, deceiving because it's really only 82 degrees, but the wind is at zero miles per hour and the gusts are up to two, which is <laughs> essentially non-existent. So there's no air movement. It's hot in the shade. The grass is thick and dry, even though we got all that rain. The balls are barely moving. They're beginning to caught up in players' feet. They're sticky. So it's a challenging day, I think. Yeah, and for the, the fans and, and spectators, uh, we're also getting bit up by bugs and all that kind of stuff because since there's no air moving we're tucked down here in the River Valley um, Anyway, so we watched the Des Moines Christian girls take on the, uh, the the Lions that is take on the Gilbert Tigers Lions versus Tigers. What'd you think about that Brody? Brody approved uh, and Then on the other side of the bracket we saw the Davenport Assumption Knights take on the Sioux City Bishop Heelan Crusaders um, Davenport Assumption uh, and Sioux City, both with uh, kind of like historic um, records uh, being at the state tournament. Uh, Bishop Heelan's been there for uh, the state best 21 times, which I, that's kind of impressive. Um, you guys didn't watch that game, though, did you? That was me. So let's talk about the Des Moines Christian game first. Got it. So it's kind of these water breaks are like kind of helpful because it breaks the game almost into quarters. You know, you got the first quarter before the pre-water break, post-water break, and then the second half as well. Um, so, I don't know. First three minutes, Isabel Garcia hits the post for Dwayne Christian. And you're like, holy cow, like almost an unbelievable start to the game for Dwayne Christian. Unfortunately, it doesn't go in. Gilbert starts controlling the, uh, the game a little bit. And then water break hits. Quarter two is what I'm going to call it. You know what I have in my notes? I literally wrote one word. Nothing. <laughs> I think it just, it was a, both teams struggled. They, when they connected the ball to feet, it was like pretty good. But then it got a little bit because they're, I'm sure the weather, they're tired. It got to be a bit of just smashing it. And the parents on Gilbra sitting down by them, like, oh man, they were getting a little bit frustrated with their own group of just knocking it long. And then they would kind of tease Des Moines Christian for knocking it long. Uh, <laughs> so it was an interesting, um, interesting thing there. Gilbert goalkeeper, probably one of the best female goalkeepers we've seen. Um, you know, I remember we saw the Iowa State goalkeeper a couple years ago, the transfer from Ohio State, and remember we talked about, hey, this is like a proper goalkeeper. Um, her name is Jordan. Uh, her name is Jordan. Remember? Silkowitz, maybe. Yeah. So Gilbert's is Braylon Thomas. The if anybody is playing goalkeeper, boys or girls, go watch Hirsch. The communication she provides she doesn't stop talking she's moving the entire time she's demanding she's there's a reason like they didn't get scored on today but i'm shocked they gave away 14 goals this year because they're two center backs ava johnson who is my new favorite player do you want to know why she smashed somebody no <laughs> she is the only one in probably the last decade i've seen where copas Ooh, i love it <laughs> oh i know like <laughs> She's good. That's helpful. But she wears copas. Like, man, that's I love it. Just a nice, like an old black shoe, right? Yeah. I love that, too. Sign of it. It actually, like, is and pretty, copas. defines her game. Simple, effective. Um, so she was good, and her counterpart next to her, Alex Harswick, was good. Um, and then, like I said, the goalkeeper was, was outstanding. I did see her make a really nice save in the second half, sort of a yeah. you know diving save across her body for yep. uh, against Isabel Garcia. So, yeah, definitely... Uh, credit to credit to the Tigers uh, on that stuff. Matt, you shut up. Uh, what about halfway through the second half? Yeah, actually, I watched. Um, I did a little traveling today up to Boone, Iowa, and back. So I actually caught most of the game on on the live stream. Mm -hmm. So I know they've taken a little bit of heat, but actually, it was it was pretty good um, for me anyway. Um, I actually thought, you know, Des Moines Christian um, had the majority of chances from one. What I watch, I think they're going to go back and watch film and really start sort of kick themselves for some of the missing those, those chances. Blake, I think he's mentioned um, Isabel hit the bar early. I might have missed that one, but Megan McGuire also hits the bar uh, in the first half, I believe, um, on a shot. Gianna Bennett puts a couple of really nice crosses across the center of the box. 
uh, and no one really gets a, a good foot on it to finish. Uh, they had a ton of chances. And then even in the second half, um, Ben, you mentioned the, a save. I think you were thinking of a different one than I am, but because Isabel was at, out at the time, but I just remember Jenna Roberts sort of sc scrapping for the ball. Wow, I'm just listening to a coach over here. He's giving a very inspirational uh, pregame talk. Sorry for the distraction. That's the Mustangs, though. I mean, that was intense. Dan James wow. was after it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, back to uh, Jenna Roberts. She scrapped for the ball, um, did a really, really nice job, and kind of pushed it out of her feet, squared it across the um, the field to probably 20 yards out. Player gets it out of her feet, strikes it, and it looked like it was going in. And any other goalkeeper probably in the tournament doesn't save that ball. But like Blake said, the the goalkeeper for Gilbert is excellent. Um, so, you know, for me, I think Des Moines Christian, it, it's all about finishing your chances, right? And then, of course, uh, uh, you've got the penalty. Isabel steps up, gets a penalty. You know, one goal wins that game, as it did. And so had she have, you know, unfortunately she missed that. And, but that was certainly a, a big moment in the game. Yeah. I mean, then you go first water break or first extra time, nothing happens. And I was if I was predicting a 0-0 shootout, but Gilbert I. gets uh, gets in, gets behind. I couldn't see. I was at the opposite. Do you guys know who scored the winner for Gilbert? We, With three minutes I, left. I didn't see. I didn't see get the winner. One ever know for Des Moines Christian, though. I thought, um, I don't know if it's Sophie or Sophia Potoven. Yeah. I thought she had a great game. Left back, back, strong, effective. And you know who, like, her, uh, the girl next to her, Tessa Erzin, yeah. had a massive header in the second half to save, like, uh, Gilbert played a great ball in. And, like, you want to talk about a big, strong header? Like, and she won two or three balls. I was more impressed with her today than I was on Tuesday. And then that freshman again, uh, Addison Oetker, um, I think might be Sammy Webster's replacement now, but she she was pretty good on Tuesday, and again she was or Wednesday. Now she was good again. So yeah. a bright future there. And then one other Gilbert girl I thought was really good, Nora Kalvik, midfielder. Um, I didn't get to see Gilbert play on Wednesday, but she was uh, she was outstanding. Yeah. So end of the game, right? We get to what three minutes left. So th there there is some controversy. At the um, for the game winner, so I was. I don't like really watch. I don't like the side perspective. So I remember after this, the um, first overtime period, I said to Ben, "Hey, I'm gonna go walk down to the end line because I like that perspective, just so you can look from the goalkeeper's perspective up the field." And so I was standing 20 yards against the fence behind the goalkeeper when Des Moines Christian's player shot the ball. It went to the goalkeeper's left and low. And the goalkeeper dove over it, and it goes under her, but it nicks off of her arm as it goes out, and and it's a corner. It's a clear corner. Um, there's no question about it. And so I looked at the referee, and the referee kind of went like this, like he thought might it might, it might be he was he was going with the corner, and then he looked the the linesman had a different call with a with a goal kick. So of course they got a goal kick. But it's a huge moment in the game. 30 seconds later, the ball's in the back of the, because, the other end. Exactly. So Gilbert passed it out of the goal kick and then goes straight down the field and scoring and get the game winner. So now, to be fair to the referee crew, it's a really, really slight nick. And I think I was probably in the best position of anyone on the entire field to see it. But I have to say 100% that was a corner kick. Uh, but that's how the game goes. And, I mean, Des Moines Christian, like, they should have won it earlier. Right? So I don't think they can, you know, I, this is not a situation where you can blame the refs, but... I just like to point out the controversy in these games because I think it's, it, it's what makes this event fun to watch. Gilbert boys, supporters. Oh, great supporting. Group showed there. up, didn't they? They did. And we've got both Gilbert teams uh, coming back tomorrow, so I'm sure things will be pretty exciting there. Um, they were all fired up, weren't they? Yeah, well done, boys, because the girls came out yesterday for them and made their presence known. So, yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit just briefly about Sioux City Bishop Helan and Davenport Assumption. Uh, I sort of thought that was going to be the game to watch, and for the first probably 20 minutes or so, it, it definitely was. Um, Sioux City Bishop Helan, they were all over Davenport Assumption, um, really putting pressure on them all over the field. I really liked the number nine, who was actually wearing the number nine on the back of her jersey as well, Traylon White. And then uh, she was just, I, I literally walked up to the field and saw her take off after the ball, and she rounded the corner with such pace that I literally had to like stop and watch. Um, she was very, very quick. 
um, but also a good little player and uh, definitely created at least one goal and um, I wouldn't be surprised if she scored in the second half. I wasn't able to see that. Um, let's see who else. I also like the Lauren Pack. She scored the second goal. And then the number 23, Jada Newberg, was pretty uh, pretty strong on the right side. Had the assist for the first goal. Um, Downport Assumption did not look really into the game. Um, I think that's sort of the... That was sort of what brought us to halftime. So, how did those halftime talks go with the coaches? Yeah. Historic. <laughs> Story. Historic, historic. <laughs> yes, yeah. So we went over first to the Sioux City Bishop Healing coach, Coach Sean Mansfield. Just tried to get a couple minutes with him. They were up three-zero at the time, um, and we got the Dikembe Mutombo, which again, that like Blake this. says, yeah, that's a no, no, no. no. <laughs> um, it was the first time that uh, that's ever happened to us. We've um, ever, um, and then then we're we turned around, but then, but then we we're got really to hurt. I was I was slightly offended. I was kind of bummed, though, honestly, because uh, I think that it would have been good to get his perspective and then um, hopefully get the girls over for a press conference later. But um, then we also went over to chat with Elizabeth Moss, the Davenport Assumption coach. And granted, she was in maybe a little bit different position, uh, down 3-0. Um, and she asked to uh, get a chat afterwards, and we just respectfully moved on to watch the other game. Um, but anyway... Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see how Helan does against uh, Gilbert. Uh, Helan was very good. They had some really strong players, and I think it'll. Uh, Gilbert's going to be fired up. They're going to kind of have that home field advantage, and I guess we'll see what happens. Should be a good game. I hope Gilbert smashes them. <laughs> <laughs> I do. That's because you were offended. And they were cool. Like the girls in the first day came over. They were awesome. Good personalities. Uh, the supporters were crazy. Um, and their coach has a dyed pink goatee. Yeah, and like super nice guy. They, they got a co-coach. They, they, got, they got one of the unique situations of the co-coaching staff, um, Dan Jones, as well as Heather Curran. So, um, yeah, they're like local. And they haven't told us no yet. So. <laughs> well, here's my take on it, right? They say defense wins championships, right? And so... We talked about the Gilbert goalkeeper. I think that whoever they play is going to have a tough time uh, getting goals. So perhaps uh, Dikembe Mutombo goes the other way tomorrow. <laughs> It'll in, be uh, interesting. What's going to happen the Gilbert at, goalkeeper? The, at halftime? When we'll we'll be, yeah, because he's going to get asked again, isn't he? <laughs> this is, oh, if you want to see some something good, this will be interesting. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, shut her down. Uh, it's time for the 2 By the way, I, I'm going with Gilbert tomorrow, too. I just want to sneak that in there. Gilbert all the way. <laughs> Fair enough. The 2A action is just underway, so we're going to get to that. We'll see you soon. All right. We're hoping that this cool breeze that's hitting us right now stays away, or, well, maybe it stays, but we just finished up the 2A action, and 3A action's coming up. We're here with the 2A recap. We just saw Dallas Center Grimes take on the North Scott Lancers, and Blake watched the Pella Little Dutch and the Waverly Shell Rock Go Hawks. I uh, mentioned Blake's name before. He's my co-host. I'm Ben Brackett. This is Soccer Talk. Steve's, what up? It's weird being all alone up here. It is. That's We've had good. a lot of help, a lot of guests. It's been awesome. But back to the uh, OGs, is that what these young kids call people like us, like the originals? I think so. OK. Perhaps. Um, OK, well, I'll talk about my game first. Uh, anything you want to know in particular? No, I mean, I'd be curious how DCG reacts after playing for f only 40 minutes first round. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so I actually didn't see them go up 1-0, but they went up 1-0 in like the first uh, first quarter, if you will, before the water break. Um, and the goal was with uh, sophomore Landry Glasgow, uh, number three. And I got to say, overall, she, I watched the whole rest of the game, and she was quite impressive. Um, mostly just her running uh, and her effort. I think, honestly, those were the things that I enjoyed the most. But then um, she, and she was just really willing to work for her team. And I think that's like the, the MO of this squad. Um, you remember in that last uh, comp press conference we had, Siebes, and, uh, or sorry, in the podcast, Sehig mentioned that uh, the coach over there had everybody fired up. In the, yeah, that team was... Dan James. Yeah, exactly. Dan James for DCG and the squad in general just... They're all on the same page, and it's like it seems like all the little details, everything from the staff rocking uh, matching shoes, shorts, and shirts and hats. Um, you know, the girls all do their hair before the game. Uh, they seem like they really are together. And also, man, it's a deep squad because um, you know you'd have uh, like Ella Forsyth, who Forsyth coming on, who I thought was really good. She'd be coming in and out with Landry Glasgow. Um, they had the uh, 
young Neef and older Neef, um, Kylie and Kenna, both of them were were good. Um, you know, we had Elena Bartok. You know, like you've got all these players just up and down the roster that are um, good, good little players. And it also seemed like just again like the bench. Everybody was cheering for their team, being positive. You had fans in the stands, uh, like young little girls cheering for them. So I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm impressed by the, the culture they've got there. And apparently we've got some lightning. That's the report. Let's hope that it holds off. Blake, let's talk a little bit about your game. Um, actually, wait. Let me talk about um, I liked a couple players from North Scott. One in particular, uh, senior Kenna McGee playing in the middle of the park and she was all over the place um breaking up attacks um starting attacks for her team um and then also the, the goalkeeper natalie nepper um she also was, was pretty sharp back there i guess you know outside that first goal which i don't know what happened there but she made some really good saves um and i guess i'll also shout out to my fritz uh for dcg because she made a couple big saves down the stretch one in particular and um, you know, when you mentioned, you talked about like a proper goalkeeper in four seeps. Um, I really do think that uh, Maya's probably in that conversation as well. She's always moving, always talking, kicks well, distributes well, uh, makes the big saves. Um, anyway, I like it. So let's let's shift to you. Defending for a champs, right? Like, clearly uh, yeah. they obviously graduated some folks, but uh, got a lot returning, it sounds like. That's right. I am curious to see how they do in their big uh, final game. And who are they going to play, Blake? They are going to play the Waverly Shell Rock Go Hawks, a rematch from earlier in the season that Waverly prevailed 1-0. So Waverly Shell Rock was very good. Um, obviously, they got the tradition. They've been there, done that. A um, couple, like, funny little pieces. Their coach, Scott, we talked to him last year or two years ago, Shara. Shara, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but that guy gets his 10,000 steps in plus another 10,000 during the game. Like, not up and down shouting, but just walking around the tent, taking a drink of water. I don't know if he saw one <laughs> corner that they defended in the last 30 minutes. It was almost like not too nervous to watch, but a little bit of too nervous Anxiety, to watch. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was great. And one thing I, so first half, 0-0. Zero, zero, uh, Warner, obviously pretty dynamic up top for Pella. And then Stromberg for Waverly Shellrock. She was, she's their top player as well. Uh, both neutralized in the first half and then Pella scores, or uh, Pella gives away a penalty, uh, I don't know, halfway through the second half or so. And Stromberg steps up, finishes it, and um, kind of puts the game away. So one thing, Waverly Shellrock, you want to talk tactics? Like I'll talk Titan talk Tactician tactics. real quick. They probably wasted a solid total of like three, four, five minutes of getting the ball in their attacking third, throwing it into Stromberg. She just held the ball and like rolled to the corner, walked. She's so big and strong. And Pella, like this easy, super easy and simple, like put one in front of her on a throw and one behind her. And they keep the ball inbounds. Then they actually win the ball. And Shell Rock either has to throw it backwards or is out of options. But they continue to let Shell Rock throw the ball seven yards down the line to Shell Rock's big, strong target forward, their best player. She was able to hold it. And poor number, uh, poor number 13, Annika or Annika Stoltzfus, like had to man mark her, it seemed like, and just got run all over the place. So um, Dallas Center Grimes, here's my recommendation. If you are losing and Shell Rock keeps throwing it into Stromberg, put one in front, one behind, and you've absolutely negated that problem. I gotta believe that Dan James has talked about that before with his squad because they do a similar thing. Late in the game, uh, they started to just kind of wear the clock down, take it to the corner, and do a similar, similar thing. So I would, I would like to think Dan's talked about what do we do if, if uh, somebody does that to us. Yeah, like Shell Rock is. I mean, again, they are. We should have, should have expected they'd be good, but I was impressed. They've uh, their goalkeeper. They've allowed one goal all year. Wow. She's was oh, a proper goalkeeper. They've got this little number uh, 14 freshman, Addie Ott, in the back that ended up marking, man marking Warner around the field the last little water break. And you want to talk about, we thought the boys last night in the Centennial Johnston game were tackling. Like, she was a force. I loved it. It was awesome. Um, I was really, really impressed. I think it'll be a great, great rematch in the final. I love it. 
and that's probably all there is to say about it. Uh, we're excited to be here tomorrow for the big day of finals. 2A has wrapped up. 3A is now post Oh, uh, here's Scott coming over. They didn't know what's going on, so we'll see what happens. Right on. Okay, well, stay tuned. See you soon. Okay, the end of day four. It's been hot. I'm a little sweaty, I'm a little tired, but no big deal because we just saw some awesome four, or sorry, 3A girls soccer action. We saw my Valley Tigers take on the Waukee Northwest Wolves and Blake, your drags, rolling against the Dallin Catholic Maroons. Uh, welcome to Soccer Talk, I'm Ben Brackett. I just previously mentioned Blake Siebers. I've got the Titan Tactician, Matt Sahag. What's up? Oh, I love it. Um, been a long day, we had a little rain delay. For the Again. third, fourth day in a row now. Can't I think keep every, track, every can't day? we? Have we every day? I think so. It seems like it. So, um, let's talk first about that Johnston Dragons Dallin Catholic game. Uh, Coach JP uh, John Pearson for Dallin Catholic trying to, um, I mean, really take down one of the top teams in the state in the Johnston Drags. Yeah, I think on paper they were <laughs> the underdog. And sorry, JP, I love you, but. You guys were overmatched, unfortunately. Um, I, first time I've seen Johnson play 80 minutes. Man, they were good. We were talking about the boys. So this is the, um, uh, I don't know, what's the promotion for the podcast slash YouTube channel last, uh, yesterday, about who's the best player on the boys' side. <sighs> Isabella Balsley, I th what I saw was the best female player I've seen so She's far. She's the best dragon. Well, She's pretty good. She was so quick, going to Drake. Um, Kevin, Lindsay, well done. Yeah, I mean, she was really good. And, like, at the end of the day, she scored two goals. Two, like, was the name on the score sheet and was dynamic. And I haven't seen her play since. It's been a few years. And, I don't know, Matt, you may be able to talk a little bit more. But, like, kind of like that Megan McGuire from Dwayne Christian. Like, eh, I thought she was okay last year. Really improved this year. And then Balsy was, she was, she was legit. Yeah, well, I mean, a year makes a, a big difference, right? So she's actually, she's only a junior still. So she's, she's still got a year left. Um, and so you're talking about a sophomore playing last year in the state tournament versus a junior now. Um, and so I think that just makes a big difference physically in the game. But, but yeah, I mean, Isabella's has really come on. I mean, it's it's been fun to watch her, her grow and get better. Um, I've known her since she's been about 10 or 11 years old. And she's she's always been that that kind of quick player that if she, if she, she kind of just glides out there. Um and she's, she's super quick and super fast, and if she breaks away, she's got a real problem. I think I said last night, I said, if Dowling was going to win the game, they had to figure out a way to stop Balsley, and they obviously didn't figure that out. So, yeah, first goal, number two for the Drags. Uh, I mean, one, the Drags have, like, an interesting number. There's a number one that plays a lot. I think, is it Hallie? How? How? Yeah, like, plays a lot of minutes. And In goal? Exactly. That's my <laughs> point. Not, like... No, so no, it was good. Uh, but she played. She won the ball, played it into uh, Isabella, and she rounded the goalkeeper like the tenth minute, and kind of put the pressure on Dowling there in the first uh, first part. And then you know who was the first half? Cause I was sitting in the first half, uh, the half that Dowling was attacking, Johnson was defending. Emma Hampton literally did not lose one tackle, one one v one battle, or one header, like flawless in the first forty. She was really, really good. And then, I don't know, we love referee talk. Don't wait to make it controversial. He handed out three yellow cards, I think, in the first half and maybe got influenced by the crowd. The crowd was awesome. Absolutely unbelievable. And they probably, because they were, you know how everybody loves a yellow card. Oh, they the do. parents just Especially cheer and the students yeah. cheer when somebody gets a yellow card. It's like, well, I don't know if that's like a good thing. It's just a weird Thing, right? And like yeah, they I don't just think any of us were a fan of that, but it does once, happen. Yeah, and once the first one comes out, all of a sudden every little late tackle and the girls were helping each other out. Again, we talked like they know each other. They play with each other. They're not going into stuff to injure, but uh I loved it. it was, that's your controversy for the first half, Matt. Look at him, he's just he's just over the moon, isn't it? Both he of is his dragons oh, yeah. in the final. He's, totally he's just like right now. smiling ear to ear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it is good. I mean, it is it's awesome to see um that Johnston team have some success. I mean, the girls that were just up here just now, Ty Donaldson, um, Emma Hampton, Isabella Bosley, Meredith Downs, um, I, all like, I mean, I've known them all since they've been 10 or 11 years old. So to see them have success, some of them in their senior year, um, and to go in the final is really, really cool. 
Um, and they've got a obviously they've just got a really balanced attack, you know. Like I mean, don't forget about Ty as well. We talk, talked a lot about Isabella, but um, Ty's their second leading goal scorer as well, and she's a big threat and she's she's goal scorer too. So from front to back, I mean, Meredith plays in goal, Emma's center back, and then we saw the two uh, the two threats to score a goal, and I I bet they'll all have an impact uh, here tomorrow night. Does Johnston use the same water source as Gilbert? <laughs> Because having the boys and girls both in the finalists, that's pretty pretty much something to me. Uh, yeah, and it brings literally like a question like that I forgot about to ask because I couldn't remember because I was sweating so profusely in my <laughs> long sleeve Johnston top. <laughs> but what if, I mean, neutrals at Johnston, they go to Johnston. Students, families. How are you supposed to pick? So the girls play at, at six. six. The, the boys, boys at play. seven. Yeah, like what? We, we we had a parent come by who has a boy and a girl on each team. Like how what? Is that he's a recent yeah he's a recent YouTube channel subscriber Nate there's your shout out uh, <laughs> love it yeah he's like he's got a daughter so who's his daughter him. Kate does she play at the back too like uh, Grant she again I was sitting I went in the shade because it got super super hot there yeah. uh, in the second half um, no she plays probably half the game yeah and I, I couldn't again like Johnson like, I'm sure Stork sorted out the jerseys but you can't see the numbers JP had like jerseys that were white. With the numbers that weren't black, they were kind of like yeah. translucent almost, as you can't see exactly who is who. Yeah. It's kind of a struggle. But that's kind of fun, though. You've got two kids in the final. That's pretty awesome. Well, that's I mean, got to be a pretty a, happy family, right? Lots to celebrate. Probably a happier family than the other, um, good transition here, than the other family at, at uh, West Des Moines that had. They've got a Valley and a Dowling kid, yeah? Yeah, the Galloways. So Avery plays over at, um, at West Des Moines, and then Abby played for Dowling. So, yeah. It'll be kind of a, a split household tonight, but that's a good segue into the game. I was going to say, I love a good segue. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Bl- Matthew, we watched a decent game over there together. Um, it really seemed like one-way traffic, though, to start, and the Wolves were on top. Like It was just, like unquestionably Wolves. Yeah, right. So they get an they get an early goal. It's a great goal, actually. Uh, number four, can you give me her name? I will. Um uh, Carly Boatman. Yeah, so Boatman beats a player out wide, crosses it in. Mahoney gets on the end of it and just kind of sets it down low. And I believe it's Coppola, Anna Coppola, who just walks through the ball into the back of the net. It was a really, really good first goal. And from there on out for the first 10 or 15 minutes, it was all walking northwest. And it was like, ooh, this could be a long day for Valley. Um, and then the uh, it just all changed. So how the 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 turning point in the game was obviously the equalizing goal, but so what, it's interesting actually too because talk about some little bit of referee controversy for me. I don't know how many people were looking at this, but I certainly was. So there's a foul. It's on the edge of the box. We're all the way at the end of the field. Um, Valley's player breaks through. It's just her and the goalkeeper at the edge of the box, and she gets taken down on a clear penalty. Right. So it's a clear foul. So the, our question is, is it inside or outside the box? We certainly couldn't tell from where we were. Right. But the referee calls it outside the box. Regardless, though, I mean, that's the last person. It seemed clear from where that's we were. That's got to be red, right? Per- yeah. If you, well, because so, I made the comment to you, well, it's at least a yellow. And you, your comment was like, well, if it's a yellow, it's a red. Yeah. Right? I mean. Yeah, because it's, it's last person now. So, so that's really interesting because it'll, it'll kind of lead into later in the game some other drama. But, but I think it's also one of those like kind of the ball never lies or whatever, right? Because the free kick that they score on, I mean, not a good free kick. No offense to the goal scorer, but it was more uh, um, it was, an issue with the wall, right? They they flinched, they opened up, and it was like the party in the Red Sea, and the goalie didn't have a chance. She couldn't see it, and uh, I mean, it was in the corner. So yeah, literally, I mean, we were looking right at the wall. And she struck it. She struck it probably about chest height, right, by the time it hit the wall. Yeah, maybe even just hip height even. But the three, the four players in the wall all just split apart. It was so bizarre, actually. It was. And if then, they would have just stood, stood still, it would have hit them, and then it would have been no goal. Yeah, so if, anyway, so it goes 1-1 one, one then. Can I just real quick interrupt? Our I boys mean, did, did the draft dodger <laughs> on the wall. Like, so did they, they didn't, yeah, well, no, nah, yeah, remember oh, that week, yeah, couple, yeah, two yeah, weeks yeah, ago, yeah. like, we had eight-year-olds that, guess what, on the wall? Yeah, but the draft dodger wouldn't have uh, successfully. No, but the wall doesn't move. You, Probably like, not. You yeah. can jump, but you, they didn't turn their back. So, like, I think 
I don't know these. Well, I think that's just one of those things that, like, at, at another level, at, the, at a higher level, it's absolutely unacceptable. But then at this level, you just hope that the it's something that comes up. And I would guess Tony Gabriel's going to be livid. Oh, he's probably yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he's taught him and told he him. He will. Him. He'll be upset about that. But I mean, they also they also got a, got away with one because they could could have been a player down. So so then the next thing that happens is Valley then. Um, so that's it's one one at the half time at halftime. Um, early on in the second half, then um, uh, I can't remember who it was. Uh, one of the players broke through. I think it was number ten for what team, Matt? Valley. For Valley into the box, and number three for Waukee Northwest just clipped her down, and it was a clear penalty. And so Rachel Hansen stepped up and buried it. So it goes two one. Now the momentum's really, really in Valley's favor. Quick shot on Rachel Hansen, strongest player on the ball on the field. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she was just bullying kids all over the place. Yep. Um, I just, I don't know. I was enjoying that. I love a, I love a good bully on the field. Yeah, that'll be a good, that'll be a good uh, matchup tomorrow night, actually, because she'll probably go right up against Emma Hampton. So it'll be pretty, pretty interesting to see how that, that kind of pans out. Um, just like physique-wise, they're two totally different players, right? I mean, Emma's kind of like long, you know, she's tall, tall. And, and thin. Um, Rachel is is shorter, but she's she's stockier. Just down, and she's yeah. built like a like a like a brick wall. So she's really really strong. She was. I just saw her. There was one time where she was shooting the ball, and she just like held the girl off with one arm, like it was no big deal. Yeah, I loved it. Right. Uh, so then, talk about the the additional controversy that we that you 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 didn't fully see it. I didn't see it at all. Yeah. So it, it's it's down. It's right in front of really the um, Waukee Northwest bench, and so. Tony Gabriel must have had a really, really good look at it. But the ball gets played in, in the air. And it's one of those where it's a tough one to judge if you're a player because you've got to get your foot up in the air. And so Anna Coppola brings her foot up in the air. And it's like, it's it's a high, her, her leg's up there high. Sure. But the Valley player is also going for the ball. And so she kicked the Valley player, I think, in the head. But... I mean, for me, it, w- it's, it didn't look intentional to me. And so the referee called a foul. He then gave her a card. I couldn't – I don't know if she was on a card or not, or she gave her a straight red, or she complained about it. It was two yellows. But regardless, she got sent off. For me, it was really, really harsh. Um, and I think that ends up being probably the defining moment, though, doesn't huge it? Huge defining moment because you go, you it's, go it's down. It's 1-1. And it's 90 degrees. Yeah. It's what's the? Re- I'm just curious. What's the reaction? We haven't talked about this. It's, it's like, fairly muted, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's kind of like questioning what was going on. I mean, almost Ga- surprised. I mean, like Tony was livid. Well, Gabriel was livid. So I'd I'd like to to get his perspective on what happened there. Um, but again, I just think that's a really really tough result, right? That that should be, to me, it's just a foul. But if it's a if it's a second yellow yellow to send somebody off, because we've been in that you've been in that moment, right? Where you're you have to make a decision as a player. The ball's coming in. You're in a position where you have to win the ball, or, or the ball gets through to goal, and so you've got to get a, a piece of your body on it, and so your leg might come up, up you know towards chest height, but the other player's head might also be coming down. Was yeah. it? And so it's like was a. Was she in the goal? What's that? Like was no, the, it was just on the sideline. Yeah. Okay. And that's I mean it's tough though too as a player you know if you're going and you 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 stick your leg out like you. You're not necessarily wrong, but I don't. I never understand the player that sticks their face in, in that space. You do it, it to. No, I know, it. but to me, like, I think that's the dangerous bending, player, right? Yeah, well, like you can run through it, like maybe get kicked in the chest, or you put your face there. I don't know. I'd probably go with just getting kicked in the chest. But that's the me. other thing, yeah, think about too is like if she, her foot <laughs> is in front of the player's head, like like she's there first. Yeah. She's won the ball. Yeah. So I, I and again, we're a long ways away, so the angles might have been a little bit different, but it was just. It was a big moment in the game. Yeah, and to be fair, I'm not exactly sure the rule on high kicks um, as far as, like, how high it's supposed to be. But regardless, that was the turning point. And Valley, you know, because I came back, I missed that. And then I came back, and it, 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 talk about one-way traffic, it went the other way. And it was Valley was just on top. And Waukee couldn't get a foothold. Um, they just they, – they've got good players, but they just weren't able to, to make it work. Nope. Uh, I mean, Zoe Mahoney, stud. Um, but, the, you know, they have her playing out wide. Like, I think on mm. a day like today, maybe you put her through the middle and you just, like, tell her to just go hard and do whatever she wants and see if she can win the game herself. Yeah. You know, for her entire youth career, I've watched her play out wide, and I've always said if I if I had her in one of my teams and I coached them, she'd be playing straight down the spot on my team. Yeah. Well, She's I just s- so 
I mean, she can, you know, she's that box to box runner, right? Um, and like, especially on the left, right? Like, y- you, she's she can play with both feet. But I saw her I mean, take a free kick with her right foot. Yeah, no, all right. She can no. play with both feet, but like that's why to me you put her down the straight straight in the middle of the field. But obviously he's got a lot of weapons, so it just kind of depends on the day. She did go into central midfield Late. at the beginning of the second half, oh, yeah, and yeah. then went back out wide again. So maybe there was some just some personnel kind of issues they were sorting through there. But one of my favorite moments actually in the tournament is the West Des Moines Valley third goal. Oh, what only, a great goal! Only because and also, of the what reaction. A celebration. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was Ava. number three, Avis. Sturmler? Yeah. Sturmler? So she, Stemler, sorry. So she gets the ball in the edge of the 18 yard box on the right side as you're facing goal. She kind Somebody of. slipped her in nice, like it was a good little pass, and she's good. She, but she, she's taking it wide, she's too. She's taking her first touch away from goal, so it's like, ah, she's really going to have to get her hips around this one. And she does. And just she just kind of lofts it and curls it. it over Vic. Um, Vic's head is the goalkeeper for walking. The Stone celebration, West. though. And it went in. And it was like, I mean, she's got a defend, she's got defender marked by her name here in the program, right? She was playing, she was playing as a winger up front. And so she's only she's scored only a single goal all year, yeah. So she's, right. so she's so jacked. What number and was she playing? She, yeah. yeah, right. So, but in she that moment, three. like she was like elated, like she had. She looked at the crowd and like literally, I feel like she said like, "Oh my God, did that happen?" Yeah. <laughs> like, just like no. screaming like for joy. Like and then all the players and just she just kept like screaming and screaming and screaming because she like she knew she had just gotten the game winner. Yeah, right? was, that put the game to rest. It was definitely so it was, it was one case. of my favorite moments. It would have been great, Ben, if you would have got the Valley Tigers over here for a press conference. Well, but. you know, I invited them, but I'm guessing there was some sort of miscommunication, um, <laughs> probably on my part. <sighs> um, but yeah, so we got a big CIM. Well, I guess is it? It's not the CIML anymore, but we've got a great Metro matchup. Uh, maybe a little Sporting Iowa Derby. Essentially, you've got the. Uh, Johnston Valley. So we'll, hopefully we'll get a uh, big Sporting Iowa supporters group out here this week to or this weekend to check it out. Um, but it, gonna be a gonna be a big day tomorrow. You guys stole my program. Did they play earlier this year? They did. Who won? Valley two zero. Interesting. So very interesting. These are gonna be the things. Johnston seems to think they're ready for them. Valley. Uh, I'm just gonna guess is riding high and feeling good as well, and they're gonna. Roar at those drags. It's going to be good. We're gonna know, be I, I, I got to see if I've got to find any orange in my wardrobe at home. Too bad the Valley boys couldn't pull it off. <sighs> so it goes. All right. Well, uh, another great day in the books. It was hot. It rained. It's going to be story, hot tomorrow. Story of the tournament, right? <laughs> Weather delay. To, it's going to be hot tomorrow. We'll Weather see Weather delay in Scornavacas. There you go. That's right. Let's shout out to Scornavacas for taking care of us all week. Because uh, every time we have a rain delay, we have a mo- uh, mama's meatball pizza. And, and a couple of brownies. <laughs> <laughs> and french fries for Brody. <laughs> so, all right. We'll see everybody tomorrow for a big day of finals. Thanks, Brody. See you tomorrow. <laughs>